when the colors started coming, naturally people were throwing it over. Radha and Krishna was coming back on us. And so we all started scooting to the back of the stage, sort of like in a... You know, holy is the thing that if you're not really into playing, playing it, you can get angry or disgusted real fast. <laughs> and generally the mood is to like, you start getting angry and then you get disgusted and then you just get out of there, you know. <laughs> we were doing kirtan on stage. <laughs> and these colors kept coming. We were backing up. And then something just clicked inside of me. And my, my inherent Julian <laughs> mood turned on. And I jumped up and I went up to the deities who already had like piles of color at their feet. I picked up some color. And I had one friend on stage who was filming the whole thing. He was a multi-millionaire from South Africa. And we've, we've grown up together. We've known one of the past 22 years. And uh, he was standing there with his son, filming the whole thing, you know, with the, the very nice, you know, stylish white cortisone and everything. And I just picked up this color and I went to Naveen and I just went, <laughs> Holy hey! <laughs> and gave him a big embrace and then basically, uh, I sort of degenerated at Holy Bob. <laughs> that was, I never saw a festival outside of India like that before. I mean, people were like covered from head to foot. Has anyone here been to South Africa? You know the Singh family, Kirtan Singh, Padithram Singh. You know, any great, they're like these Indian guys, they're Singhs. And they're, they're like Chetrias, and they're big. They're bodybuilders, too, you know. And they have, I mean, like, these guys are big. They're like the oldest brother, Pavitram, he weighs 125 kilos. And he doesn't have any fat on his body. <laughs> just, and they all keep their heads shaved completely bald. And they're like monsters, you know. <laughs> and there's another guy from the Maharaj family. You know, the Maharaj family is another... Shakya family down there, they, they own all the, the vegetable markets. And uh, <coughs> this one man named Shailendra Maharaj, young guy, <coughs> like a mountain, and com again, completely shaved, bald head. These guys were like, just, you couldn't tell what color they were, you know? You couldn't tell if they were Indians, Africans whatever, they were just completely, you know, technicolor. It was a fun festival. It was unique. And then after that I visited Cape Town, PE, and uh, then decided to add a few days and come up and spend with you all in Scotland. So it's a pleasure to be here. And I caught a little cold on the way, so you have to bear up. You know, tolerate me with that. Don't get too close. Okay. We'll read a little bit from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Recently, the the uh, when I was an essay, I picked up the Madhuri and started reading through it again. Uh, I think. Maybe outside of Brihat Bhagavatam Ritam. No, I think even more than Brihat Bhagavatam Ritam, Chaitanya Chaitanya is like, I like to read the most. It's really full of nectar. So we will read about, we'll just start reading. <coughs> so, Kaviraj Goswami says that, that in the first chapter of the Mighty Lila, what what he's going to attempt to do is give a synopsis of the Lord's later pastimes. And he says that the, the Adi Lila was nicely covered by Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur. And Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur is the 
incarnation of Shiva Vyasadeva in Chaitanya Lila. And, and Kaviraj Goswami, he also wrote the Adi Lila, or the beginning pastimes of the beginning part of Lord Chaitanya's life. But he was very, very respectful. He said, I'm only just touching the remnants of the food that has been left by Vrindavan Das Thakur. And very, very respectful not to, to overshadow, try to overshadow in any way the writings of Srila Vrindavan Das. <coughs> and uh, he says that the Adi Lila, uh, Lord Chaitanya's pastimes and the while he was Vihasta, his childhood and uh, his Vihasta life until he was 24. And then he says that the last 24 years of life are known as the Madhi Lila and the Anjali Lila. And uh, those pastimes cover Lord Chaitanya's uh, walking through India and spreading the holy names after taking sannyas. And then the years which he resided in Jagannath Puri. Uh, we know that, or we have read, that when Sri Chaitanya Dev took sannyas, then he walked for six years. At least that's the account given, given in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And every place he went, he just encouraged people to chant the holy names. And he, uh, and he encountered different people. He encountered Sarvapoma, he encountered Ramananda Roy, he encountered so many folks. And uh, for those who are of a very um, scholastic, erudite type mentality, Lord Chaitanya would present Shastra and he would change their hearts by his uh, erudition and Shastra. And then for the masses, he gave them hard knock. Now, Kaviraj Goswami says something interesting in one of his verses. He said that, that one of the main aspects of the, the Mighty Lila and the Anjya Lila was that the devotees of Bengal, they would come down every year to relish pastimes with Lord Chaitanya during the time of the Rathiyatra. And uh, and so previously, and sort of in my miscalculation, I guess, I had considered that since he had walked, had, since his final pastimes were 24 years, and since it said that he walked for six years, that perhaps those 40 pastimes with, you know, the devotees coming down, took place only for 18 years. But he says in a verse that the, uh, the association and the observance of the Jagannath Ratiyatra was something that went on for 20 consecutive years. So that apparently, you know, even during the preliminary time, right after he first took sannyas, the Lord was there in Puri at the time of Ratiyatra and the devotees would come and join him. And that was a that was a wonderful time because uh, during that period the Lord would give instruction to the devotees. He'd give them he'd give everybody some shiksha. And and Kaviraj Goswami explains here that at the end of the Rathiyatra performance and at the end of the rainy season, when all the devotees were leaving to go back home, each and every one of them would come and they would take some shiksha or some instruction from the Lord on how to conduct their devotional service for the next year. And the Lord, Lord Chaitanya would speak to each and every one of them and tell them something. 
just like that. There's that pastime somewhere where it describes the devotees of Srikanda and they come to see the Lord before leaving. So Srikanda is on the other side of the Ganga from, from what we know as Mayapur. And there are famous Vaishnavas there. Mukunda Datta, he was a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He, uh, he was the Kaviraj of Nala Hussein Shah. He was a big person, big doctor. And he was a pure devotee. He was from Srikanta. And he had a son named Rabu Nanda. And he was, he was a Param Vaishnava. He worshipped the deity with so much loyam or intense eagerness that the deity would just get down off of the altar and obey his command. And it is that story that Mukunda trained his son, Raghunanda. And then one day Mukunda left and then and then he told his son, Today you must do the puja. So the boy did everything exactly according to his father's instructions. And then at the end, his father had said, give him a big plate of fruit and give him good sweets and so forth and so on. So the boy did that, and then he said the prayers to offer the food, and he looked up and the food was still there. So then he basically he started giving it to the Lord. <laughs> and he started saying, eat. You know, you have to eat. You know, you're doing so many works, you have to eat. And, Basically, you know, just screaming at him, come, eat now. <laughs> and because of that, the Lord got off the altar. And he ate. And he got back on the altar. And then when the father came home, he asked if everything went nicely. And the boy said, yes. And he said, so please give me Mahaprasad. And the boy said, well, there's no Mahaprasad. And the father said, why? And he says, because it deviated all. And the father was a bit bewildered. And then the father saw, then the next day, he made an arrangement where he saw the son do it again. He, he was laid some trap. But the boy did it again, the did he got off the altar and the father observed it. So, Mukunda, Raghunanda, and then Nahar Sarkar Thakur, he was from that place. So they would all, you know, there's an instance, they all came and they said, please give us an instruction that we can lead our lives by as we engage in Krishna consciousness. Give us some shiksha. And so Lord Chaitanya, he told Mukunda, he said, he said, you gain material wealth, you increase your spiritual wealth. But he knew as a pure devotee that if he increased, you know, his material opulence, he would certainly use that all in the service of the Lord. And he told Raghunandan, you always stay with the deities. You always worship the deities. And he told Nahari Sakar, he said, you always preach with the Vaishnavas. Or the devotees, they asked Lord Chaitanya, what is, he, Lord, he said, what should I do? And Lord Chaitanya said, always serve the Vaishnavas. And the person said, well, I'm so fallen, I don't understand what a Vaishnava is. Can you define a Vaishnava? And Lord Chaitanya said, a person who chants the holy name even once, purely, he is a Vaishnava. He served the people who were chanting the holy names. So, some shiksha would come. Some instruction would come. That was a very integral and very important part of Chaitanya Lila. And then Kaviraj Goswami explains it later, uh, for the last, I think he says 12 years, the Lord remained completely absorbed in ecstasy. And, uh, and it's an interesting point that he makes is he says that during, during Lord Chaitanya's stay in Jagannath Puri, he said, for all the years that he stayed in Puri, he always 